Hello, everyone, and welcome to the May 15th edition of Homeschooling Help with Andrea Schwartz. And today, we're going to talk about a subject that has to deal with homeschooling, but it has much broader application. And without much further ado, I will bring in my friend and partner in discussion, Nancy Wilk. And um, here we go. Hi, Nancy. How's it going? Good. Good morning, Andrea. Good afternoon, Andrea. Whatever. Well, it's still morning here, so it all depends on where you are. Okay. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And when you and I decide what we want to talk about, it gives me opportunity to spend some time thinking when I'm working out or I'm cleaning or I'm cooking. And of course, when I'm reading and the subject today has to do with is homeschooling a calling or merely a preference? Mm -hmm. Now it may seem like a loaded question that we have, you know, already a set answer that's going to be the correct answer, but I'd like to have those who are listening Keep an open mind in terms of what calling means. And one of the things in my reading this week that was very useful, I'm going through with my husband, Dr. Rush Juni's volume three of the Institutes of Biblical Law. And he makes the point that in the Hebrew and the Greek, the word obey means to hear. So when we obey, we have heard God and we are acting accordingly. Well, if we hear God, God must have called. And so right now we're talking about calling in terms of hearing God and responding appropriately. Don't you think that's kind of an interesting way to look at the word obedience? It really is. It really is. In fact, um, we know that people start homeschooling for lots of different reasons. And along the way, that call and that the understanding of what God has spoken to us becomes clearer and clearer. And so we might not all start out on the same place in terms of calling, but just have a, you know, a sense that that's the direction before we get a very clear um, and definitive sense of that. We often grow in that direction. Right. So now, I think because we live in such an egalitarian age and we're just so used to making our own autonomous decisions that we look at a lot of things in scripture as if we could take them or leave them as if we're in some sort of potluck and you happen to like the potato salad, but I don't like potato salad and nobody's going to criticize me for not eating the potato salad and you are having the potato salad. Right. One of the things that's true about God's word is that it's a command word. And we've gotten away from the idea of the authority of God and the fact that when you don't obey God, he's not going to be happy with it. We have this idea that somehow or other we can abuse the calling God gives us. And if we want to know what that calling is, it's right in the words of scripture. Right. That's right. I was looking at Deuteronomy. That, that's the first place I began to be specifically convicted. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7, it says, And thou shalt teach them, the them is the statutes, the commandments, the judgments of God. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. So it's a comprehensive everywhere you go, our responsibility as Christians, God says, is to teach our children the ways of God, the commands of God throughout the day. Um, I want to share a story with you. Um, about uh, 20 years ago or so, um, we had um, opportunity to um do a conference. We were not, we, we hosted a conference that um, E. Ray Moore um, was our speaker with Exodus Mandate. So some folks might not be familiar with that, but he likens the public school system to Israel's enslavement. And like Moses would say um, to that Pharaoh, let my children go. Um, so 
at this conference, I was a homeschool mom. I'd organized this thing. I'd invited the speaker. I was doing it all right, man. And then here comes E. Ray Moore, and he says that he, he had to repent of his children being in another school. And I must confess, I laughed because I thought he was joking, that he had to repent of his children being in another type of um, environment because I thought that repenting uh, was about sin and that sin was just these, you know, big things of murder and, you know, adultery. And I really didn't consider it all um, as a homeschooler, even as a homeschooler, that there should be some repentance in how I was educating my children. So, that really began to put more conviction in my heart and look more closely at scripture that maybe even as a homeschool parent, I was missing some things and there was still repentance that needed to be done in terms of really teaching our children to walk with God. Now the reference in Deuteronomy, interestingly, doesn't say homeschool your children. Correct. However, the implications are, you have as your primary responsibility when you have children to raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So rather than make this what, why, why homeschooling is better than public schooling or why homeschooling is better than private school or private Christian school, I think that's the wrong emphasis. I think if we spend a lot of time focusing on what homeschooling is not, we miss what it's supposed to be. Right. In other words, if you take the average lifespan, I think the average, biblically, it's like 72 years old, you know, three score and 10. And, but some live longer, some don't live as long. And in the grand scheme of history, backwards and then the future, because we don't know how long future history, well, actually, whatever you call it, you wouldn't call it future history, but you know what I mean. Um, so we don't know. We don't know the time frame, but we're given this small segment. And this segment puts us in the middle. If nothing else, we're in the middle of history. And so maybe we have the responsibility of rearing our children, well, by modern culture, 15, 18, 20 years. And so if we don't make that a primary focus and we don't ask ourselves, have we heard? Because, you know, that per that portion that you read says, hear, O Israel. It might as well read based on what I said, obey Israel. We want you mm -hmm. to obey. And of course, mm -hmm. Israel today is not a physical country in the Middle East. It's the church because the church has appropriated the promises to Israel because the church is Israel. We are the new Israel of God. Mm -hmm. And so I think there are a lot of people who think that Christian life, especially as parents, are like the potluck. Well, some people want to do this. They're called. What if we consider, are all of us called? Is this call a universal call? And no matter how we choose to execute that call, we have to do it faithfully. Right. And so it isn't so much the actual um, manner in which we do it, but it has to be comprehensively in line with what you read in other words, every facet of a child's life needs to be put into the context of God and his word. Yes. So let's have some ideas in terms of when you said you realized you had to repent, even in the midst of already being a homeschooler. If I can pry, what did sure. you need to repent of? Um, well, uh, I would say the idea, first of all, of just, um, you know, just doing church. We, we did church um, and we're just sort of going through the motions like, you know, like the potluck, you know, um, and in, in being more focused on the commands of God rather than just the fact that my children were not involved with this bad thing or that bad thing or some other bad thing. And, um, and it, there's, there's seasons, uh, I think of my growth as 
a home educator and understanding God's call of educating the whole life under under his purposes. Sometimes I think um, initially I started very pragmatically. It was easy. Um, she was only four. She needed to learn how to recognize her name. Well, she knew how to recognize her name. We can, we can do that. And um, then other times it was, um, you know, um, humanistic in my thinking, you know, I can do as well as they could do, but still not really getting to the heart of um, uh, what does, in the general sense, yeah, this is what God wants us to do, but we didn't really have the tools to look real specifically at the law of God because of the type of um, church background we had. So right. it's taken some time to really, yeah. really hone in on those things and sharpen those ideas. You know, I like the image of the tools because if you have somebody coming to paint your house or build a house or fix something, they have tools. And I think mm -hmm. too many people, especially homeschool moms, because of the tyranny of the urgent, the tyranny of the present, don't equip themselves. And by not equipping themselves, they put themselves in a dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. If you look at the parable of the three people who were given various levels of talent and how harsh the master is with the one that didn't develop that talent. Um, he didn't even put it in the bank to get some interest. He buried it, right? How many of us really look and say, are we living out our calling in such a way that we're investing in the things of God so that we give him a return, not so much that we get a return. Right. And how many of us are instilling in our children that there will come a time when the requirements that God has on everyone will now fall on you directly and you won't have the buffer of mom and dad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because yeah. as they're growing, until they manifest whether or not they are on board with the commandments of God, they are sanctified or made holy through their parents. But we do them a great disservice if they don't understand that there is going to be a day of reckoning for them. And they shouldn't look around and say, well, all these other people who don't do this seem to be doing fine. Because mm -hmm. God's forbearance should not be confused with the fact that he's easy on sin. He's so not easy on sin that it took the crucifixion to bring people like you and me into the family of God. Right. I know there are a lot of people, pastors included, who perceive homeschooling as an option and um, as opposed to um, recognizing the larger call on our life and obedience to God in all of these areas. So I've heard, you know, heard a lot of pastors and and people um, feeling like it's an option. They'll think about it if it works, if the kids like it, if it's not too hard, until it gets to, you know, um, organic chemistry and mom doesn't know organic chemistry, so then we'll send them to something else. But like we talked about in other, um, in other podcasts, the, the specifics of um, those, particular skills being developed is, is one thing. It's one very, very small point part of putting all of our life in the context and under the obedience of God. So once we begin to understand that, then um, homeschool or Christian school, well, assuming that homeschool is a biblical Christian um, um, mindset, then I, I've had people say, is that really the hill you want to die on? Well, when you recognize that it's not an option, that it is God's call and it is obedience to him in training our children the way they're supposed to go, then absolutely it is a hill that I want to die on. Yes, I will die on obeying God or not obeying God. Right, right, but let me even just bring up that expression, a hill to die on. See, we still are framing this, <clears throat> pardon me, in the negative. In other yeah. words, what about the okay. mountain I want to live on? 
Okay. Yeah. Go, there's a whole go, different girl. way of looking at it. Yeah. In other words, it isn't so much that I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, do these bad things. It's that I want to live in the fullest expression of appreciation for my redemption. And that means that I have a message to transmit to anyone who will listen. And since God gives us children, they're a captive audience for a while. So those must be the people that we're supposed to talk into their life. That's where we start. Yeah. So that's a great, really a very important um, understanding and recognition that this is not where moms sacrifice their lives and children are, you know, chained to the desk, but it is um, the way of life. It is, it, it's paths of righteousness and um, really gives us the freedom and fullness to um, follow God and receive all the blessings that he has for us in ways that we, we don't even recognize anymore. Right. If there's an area where I think people need to repent, <clears throat> excuse me again. Yeah. The area is in making it all seem so negatively oppressive. You are mm -hmm. going to do this because we don't want you to be sexually active when you're such and such years old, or we're going to do this because you need to have a good job or whatever it is. All those things may be true. And I don't imagine there's too many parents that want negative things for their children. But if the children don't, you know, tie into the idea that God is calling them and that they're supposed to hear. Mm -hmm. Jesus told his disciples that it's God who opens the ears and opens the eyes. So if people don't hear, it's an evidence that God is not blessing them when we mm. do hear and we respond to his call. That's the whole imagery of the shepherd and the sheep hear his voice. They don't go, oh, yeah, that's our shepherd. When he calls them, they come into the sheepfold and they respond to him. So how do we respond to God? How are our children responding to God? And are we making it in such a way that they just want to get out as soon as possible because we've made it oppressive rather mm -hmm. than giving them the dignity that says God is calling you now? When Jesus yeah. says, suffer the children to come to me, it isn't so that they come and they're just waiting to be hit all the time. It's the blessings of being in the presence of God. And I think right. too many homeschooling parents, and I know I fell into this trap, um, decide that if we aren't stern and if we aren't regimented and whatever, then we won't succeed. But do we win the battle and lose the war? That's the question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, I know there can be lots of um, obstacles when, when you perceive it as an option, then there's lots of things, m many more things that can, um, that would be perceived as an obstacle to doing that. So, uh, you know, maybe it's the finances, maybe it's the timing, maybe I don't know this or I don't know that, or the kids might, might not like it. But when we realize that we're missing the blessing of God and the fruitfulness and the fullest expression of who God made us to be, then, um, you know, that uh, who wouldn't want that? Right. And I think that this is where it goes back to, I said that this topic had broader application than just with homeschooling families. Cause let's face it. If you're a family, <clears throat> there is God's call on your life. And one of those is the raising of your children. So everybody has this call. And if you don't spend time learning and hearing from God, and, and let's face it, how you hear from God mostly isn't by the clouds opening up and there's voice coming out from the sky. It's in his word and right. taking it seriously, not reading something and saying, well, that doesn't apply now. Why doesn't that apply now? Well, mm -hmm. nobody ever brings it up. Well, that's just a more of an indication of how little the church at large is teaching people how to honor God, how to fear him properly and keep his commandments. And so in a lot of ways, the homeschooling environment is the most important environment to communicate the truth that may not be floating around there because we have too many people who have actually gone ahead and bowed the knee to bail. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It looks like we have a question here. Okay. Um, 
Charles Roberts asks, how do you respond to those who say, I know homeschool kids who turned out no better than government school kids. What's the point of homeschooling them? I love that question. You know why? Because really and truly, it means that we're doing this so the world will judge us. You know how I answer it? If I instructed my homeschool kid in the word of God, in the laws of God, and that person turns away, then God is not going to hold me responsible because I taught them. So it's not necessarily a comfort to say, my child heard the truth and has now rejected the truth. But that goes into the whole idea of what's my job? Is my job to produce a nice, bright, shiny penny? Or is my job to faithfully communicate the truth of God and pray? that my child responds. Part well, of the problem is we have so many pastors, sorry, pastors yeah. and, and other Christians who basically make it this preference. Well, mm -hmm. can they say when their child turns good or bad that they taught them economics and biblical economics and they taught them the responsibility of self-government? And, you know, in other words, if you look back and you say, I didn't teach them right, well, then you have reason to be concerned. But if you were faithful in how you administered it, then all along the way, they've been told they will stand before God, not under your umbrella, but on their own. On their own. So I hope I that think, helps, Charles. <laughs> yeah. Another point, I, I think, just to you know, sort of back the sequence up a little bit, we're talking in terms of homeschooling, home educating the children. But we've got a family before children come. We've got a call on our life before children come. And so to recognize that even before you get children, are we, um, are we recognizing God's call in our life as a Christian individual? Are we recognizing God's call in our life as a family, husband and wife, before kids come? So some of this, this stuff, it needs to happen before the kid gets to be school age. And, and, and put it, all of it, everything in the, the context of God's call on our life. As a Christian, will we be obedient to him? Or are we just going to continue to operate the way the world does? But let me even point out something you just said. I love picking okay. on you. No, no, Go ahead, pick on me. Go ahead, I'm tough. You said when the child becomes school age. Right. What? School age. That's a humanistic school construct that says when he's four or five, what is it going to be? 10 sometimes it's going to be six other times. We've got to see how we have actually become um, contextualized in a humanistic mindset from the right. time that person is in your arms, because I don't know how much training can be done in utero. Maybe some, I don't know. I can't speak definitively, but I know that you can train a newborn to be soothed by the sound of your voice. Mm -hmm. I know that you can sing to a newborn and calm the person down. And I recommend wholeheartedly that mothers start reading scripture, singing scripture to their children so that they can tell their children there was never a time that you weren't surrounded by God's word. So every aspect of parenthood interacting with children is education. School yes. age, I mean, six months. If you wait until somebody's quote unquote school age to try to start teaching them things, you are going to have a little tyrant on your hands and it won't work. Absolutely. You're right. It's amazing how many, how much stuff we do, even when we know better and we, if we think we know better and we're trying better, you know, how this humanistic um, separation of things pops up in places we don't even realize it. And so you're right. Call me on it every time you hear it, because I'm doing it. Somebody else is doing it. You probably already did it. And, you know, so so it's important that that um, homeschool or family education is really recognized, not just again, not just for academics, but for the whole family to recognize God's call in our life and in function from a biblical worldview on every in every area of life. Right. And that's why you, you look at it in terms of when Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. In other mm -hmm. words, then they follow me. 
So those who don't follow Christ don't hear his voice. It's that simple. Right. When we have these charges, when we have children who have been given to us, whether naturally or through adoption or just interaction, and we are not steering them to recognize the shepherd's voice. Because the only reason you don't hear the shepherd's voice is you're suppressing the truth in unrighteousness and you're listening to a different voice. So maybe it's modern media, or maybe it's your college professor, or maybe it's whatever. The fact is, God has a plenty good size voice. If we're listening, <clears throat> we'll hear him. And if we're not listening, we won't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, wow. So I've got, there's, there's humanistic weeds still in my brain. I got I to gotta work on that. Don't we all? We we all need to, and and it permits us to do that. You know, home education, Christian education is is is, you know, and agri agriculturally, you know, they say that if there's weeds in the ground, the best way to get rid of the weeds is to plant good good stuff. And so, what what when we go to the Word of God and we say say yes, Lord, and we do what it does, it's it is the good. Um, good seed falling on good soil and that grows and that will um, agriculturally that that's that's a better way for um, getting rid of those weeds not just um, right them. the other yeah. thing is homeschooling is as much an education for the homeschooling teacher as it is for the children possibly more so because right. I've noticed in my own life and I know you have as well, now that we don't have children that we're schooling, it's not like our job is done. Now we're really focusing on those moms. I have someone who's driving an hour today because she wants to talk to me. Wow. And she wants to, and it's not unusual. Well, I used to do the same thing. When I found somebody who was a good counselor, a good mentor, I would spend time. I would drive longer than that, further than that in order to do it. So if we look at the impact it will have culturally, we want a changed set of circumstances. We don't want humanistic civil government. We don't want humanistic churches. We don't want um, filth being promoted to young people. Then we have to do something about it and look at your homeschooling years with your own children as the training ground for you to then go out and be even more fruitful for the kingdom of God. Right. Right. We, we, I have certainly found that to be true. You know, it was an education for me. And um, so, yeah, sorry. I, there's just so much to think about and the implications of this um, as an individual and as a family and how that will um, grow to impact our, our communities is, um, you know, it's just exponential growth. Okay, so now we're coming to the end of our time. I have some recommendations for those who are listening live or those who will listen afterwards. And I really hope people share this. There are two books and I don't know if they're going to, let's see how this works. Yeah, there is one called Good Morning Friends and this is volume one and then there's volume two. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend this for family devotions and... I know some families that will use it before every meal. In other words, before they eat, they will read because these sections are very small. They're doctrine rich and their encouragements in terms of how to practically apply the faith to your life in the most mundane situations. Because let's face it, we live in the mundane. We're we standing do. here on the earth. We don't live esoteric ivory tower lives. So what we need to do is constantly be feeding ourselves. And when you're constantly well-nourished and well-hydrated with God's living word and the water of life, then you're going to be in a much better position to transmit that to those God has put in your charge. And so both of those are available um, from Calcedon. It's the titles are Good Morning Friends, and there's two volumes so far. And 
what they are are transcripts of radio addresses that Dr. Rush Juni gave in Santa Cruz, California back in the 50s. I get such delight over the fact that some of these were written when I was born. So now I just told everybody how old I am. But <laughs> for 1953, 1954, and I'm thinking, what a blessing. Here I am 60 plus years later learning how to further my commitment to my Savior and Lord. So I highly recommend them. And uh, let me tell you that a lot of good questions will come out as you read them. And I hope that for those who do, that um, maybe you go ahead and uh, find your way to our Tuesday broadcast and ask the questions. Very good. Thank you. Those are good books. I have enjoyed reading mine. I always appreciate our time together, Andre. I hope others do as well. We look forward to their questions and any any topic um, suggestions that they may have for us. We'd like to hear them. Right. Absolutely. All right. So let me um, say goodbye to Nancy. And goodbye. I'm going to put up the two books, actually three books, that um, I recommend for new homeschoolers and seasoned homeschoolers. These are my two books on homeschooling and the philosophy of the Christian curriculum. Moms especially, be readers. When you're waiting in the car for the, the, the piano lesson to be done, or you finally get everybody out playing at the end of the day and you're gonna sit down with your cup of coffee, use those times to equip yourself because you're gonna need it. And in the process, you'll be enhanced as you get to hear God's call more effectively in your life. So until next time, have a great week serving the God that we love and serving his kingdom.